to invite you to our YouTube channel All People's Church Bangalore. We are pleased to make a lot of resources available on this channel. There are numerous playlists uh, that include our Sunday sermons, our TV programs, our daily devotional called Living Supernaturally and uh, also our foundations course and several other playlists, uh, resources that you could use. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you can stay updated with all the new resources that are being released every week. And all of this is given freely to you to equip you live powerfully and victoriously for Jesus Christ. Enjoy these resources. Greetings. Thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. As always, it's a joy and delight to be able to come your way and spend this time with you in God's Word. Believing God and believing His Word is something so fundamental, so foundational to our Christian life. In fact, every moment we are to walk by faith. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, that is, we constantly, continually have to believe God and believe His Word. Now, generally speaking, when we, uh, when we are going through good times, when things are easy, when everything is the way it should be, uh, you know, it's easy to say, I believe in God, I believe His Word, because, you know, everything is going the way you want it to go. But what if and what do we do when things are challenging? Or uh, when things are contrary, they are uh, uh, opposite to the way we want them to be. Uh, this is something we want to examine from the Word of God. Uh, when we look at the life and the ministry of Jesus, and uh, how He interacted with people, and what He told people to do, 
uh, in various situations, uh, we understand the mind of God, the will of God. The Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus was the Word embodied, the Word who became flesh, meaning this is God and this is God speaking to us. And everything we see uh, Jesus say and do in the flesh is really God speaking to us. Uh, he came to do the will of God. Everything he said and did is an expression of the will of God. This is the way God desires for us to live. And so we can examine how he related to people and learn from that and learn from what he taught people to do uh, during his life in ministry. Uh, we want to look today at uh, the very familiar inc incident of Jairus. Uh, we look at the record for us in Mark chapter 5. The Bible tells us here that uh, um, verse 21, that Jesus crossed over by the boat to the other side and there's a great multitude of people gathered to him. And verse 22 says, one of the rulers, rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name, when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly saying, my little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. So Jesus went with him and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Uh, so just try to picture this whole scenario. Here was a uh, a chief person of the synagogue, uh, by no means uh, an ordinary man. He was a ruler of the synagogue, the man in charge of the synagogue, the leader of the synagogue, a Jewish man. He is coming and he's falling at the feet of Jesus. I mean, that shows desperation. Uh, that shows, uh, I mean, he's coming to Jesus and this is his only hope. Uh, and he falls at the feet of Jesus and says, look, Lord, I have a daughter, she's at the point of death. And if you come, I know she will live. That's his hope. That's the faith that he has in his heart that is expressed uh, before God and all these people listening. And so Jesus begins to go to Jairus' house. And a lot of people are following, following them and they make the journey. Now along the way, we know about the, widow, about the woman with the issue of blood who touched the hem of Jesus' garment who was healed. And so... Uh, some time goes in that. We don't know how much time, uh, but there was uh, an intermission. There was a delay there as Jesus was making his way to Jairus' house. Now, by the time this woman with the issue of blood, uh, that incident had taken place and Jesus continued on his journey to Jairus' house, by that time, here's what happens. Verse 35 of Mark 5, it says, While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? So this was the news Jairus was dreading to hear. He didn't want to hear this. He didn't want things to go to this stage, to this point. But this is exactly where things were at that moment. The news came. Your daughter is dead. Uh, you know, it's a little too late to ask Jesus to do anything. And... We don't know what Jairus' feelings were at that moment. Uh, we don't know what his response was, what his reaction was. Maybe uh, the, the little hope that he had in his heart just drained out of him. Uh, we, we don't know. But it is very important to look at what Jesus said at that moment. Here's what the Bible records in Mark 5 verse 36. It says, as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken... He said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. Do not be afraid, only believe. Now, just try to envision this whole thing in your mind. Here was this man who had just received the news he was dreading to hear. Things had gone from bad to worse. The thing that he did not want to happen has happened. His little daughter has died. And uh, at that very moment, Jesus is saying, Fear not. Don't be afraid. Only believe. Now, the point I want us to understand is this. If the Lord Jesus was here today, if he was in your life situation, 
that was very similar to this. The Lord Jesus would give you the same words. He would say the same thing to you. He would say the same thing to me in our life situation. He's not going to say anything different. The Bible says he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when even in that moment when you receive news that something has gone from bad to worse, Jesus is going to tell you, he's going to tell me, fear not, only believe. That's what he's calling us to do in such situations. That's what I want us to understand. That in life situations, when things go from bad to worse, when the unexpected happens, the thing that you really don't want to happen does actually happen. What would the Lord say to you? He would say, fear not, only believe. Just have faith. Keep believing. Don't stop believing. Only believe. Believe in the Lord your God. Believe His word. Believe His promises. Believe what He has spoken to you concerning your life situation. So when the need only gets bigger, believe, my God shall supply my need. When the situation seems it's getting worse, believe, my God will cause me to prosper. He blesses all the work of my hands. He will make me like a tree planted by the rivers of water. My leaf will not wither. Whatever I do will prosper. Believe that. You keep standing in faith. You keep believing the word of God. Fear not, only believe. So you and I must learn as we journey through life. We must learn to believe against all odds. You see, and that is, this is not just one incident where Jesus um, taught in this manner or moved in this manner. We see many other situations where Jesus emphasized the importance of just having faith, of believing. Uh, you would recall the incident for, uh, in Luke the 8th chapter when Jesus and his disciples were in the boat. Uh, he told them, he said, you know, let's go out to the other side. And so they set out sailing on the lake and Jesus was resting and a huge storm came uh, it was really bad. Uh, the water began to come into the boat. Uh, they began to sink. The disciples panicked. They woke up. They woke Jesus up. They said, Master, we are sinking. We are going down. You better wake up. And so they woke him up. What was Jesus' response? He comes to the front of the ship and he rebukes the wind of the waves. And the Bible says there was a great calm. He turns around to his disciples and the first thing he asks them was this. Where is your faith? Why did you doubt? You know, Jesus would repeat the same thing to you and me. So when we are in a, in a, in a situation like that, what would Jesus tell you? He would say, where is your faith? Do not be afraid. Only believe. Keep believing. Stand firm in your faith. The same thing happened when uh, Peter began to step out of the boat and he walked on the water to go to Jesus in Matthew 14. Peter saw the winds and the waves and then he was afraid and he began to sink. The Lord held him up and the Lord took Peter back with him. And, and, you know, and, and that was a moment when Jesus taught Peter that all he had to do was to keep his eyes on Jesus and keep his faith intact. Not to let the circumstances, the situations Weaken your faith. Fear is what weakens our faith. It's the opposite to faith. So fear weakens our faith and we need to stand guard against it. So against all lords, you and I must learn to believe the word of God. Stand firm. Have faith in the word. Don't let fear come in. Now usually fear is, uh, uh, comes to our minds with, with all kinds of thoughts. You know, uh, 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 thoughts that are not real, thoughts that are imaginary, thoughts that maybe even false come into our minds. And as we entertain those thoughts, as we entertain those imaginations, uh, as we entertain those ideas that actually are not even real, and instead of keeping our eyes focused on the promise of God, on the Word of God, 
uh, if we entertain these wrong thoughts, these wrong ideas, these imaginations, uh, then what happens? Fear builds up on the inside of us. And then the fear displaces the faith. The fear causes us to move into doubt instead of staying believing God. So guard against these negative thoughts. Guard against these wrong thoughts that come in. Keep your eyes focused on the word. Intentionally go back to the word. If you need to just open up your Bible and read the same scriptures over and over again, do it. If that's what's going to calm your mind, if that's what's going to get your mind fixed on the word, you just need to do it. You need to sit down there with the Bible open, go through the promises of God, read them, reread them, say them, speak them, Keep your eyes fixed on that word because your mind needs to be settled on that word. You see the Bible says this in Isaiah 26 and verse 3. It says, God, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, his mind who stayed on thee, O God. That means when your mind is settled, when your mind stays on God, when your mind is settled on God, and how can you stay your mind on God? By stay, settling your mind on his word. So when your mind is settled on the word, you will have perfect peace. So instead of letting fear come in and cause torment, you will walk in perfect peace and you will be able to believe God against all odds in every circumstance, in every situation. You'll walk with perfect peace with your mind stayed on his word and you will be able to believe God. So we must learn to do that. I want to close by just reminding us of a very familiar example, which is that of Abraham. See, what did Abraham do? And this is from Romans, the fourth chapter, uh, verses 17 to 21. Let's just read that together. It says, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Look at verse 18 who contrary to hope, in hope, believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. Verse 18, the Bible says about Abraham, contrary to hope, in hope, he believed. In other words, when there was no reason for hope, there was no evidence and there was no basis for Abraham to have the slightest, the faintest hope, it says he believed in hope that he would become according to what God had spoken. That means he believed that I will become, I will have what God has said I will have. He believed God and he became what God had spoken. That's what I want to encourage you and me to do. You know, there is one thing that is most certain in all of the world. It is the Word of God. Circumstances can change. Situations can change. Uh, your health can change. Your finances can change. All things in the natural can change. God's Word is forever settled. It will not change. And so you and I anchor ourselves in the Word of God and because of the promise that God has made for us, because of the truth that God has spoken to us against all hope, we believe that we will become what God has spoken, that you will have in life what God has spoken, that your family will turn out the way God has spoken, that uh, your career, your profession, your life will turn out the way God has spoken in His Word, that, that everything concerning you will take place the way God has spoken. We have to believe it, and we have to stand believing against all odds. Even when things go from bad to worse, remember what Jesus said. Do not be afraid. Only believe. You and I make the choice to believe the Word of God in every situation and in spite of the situation. All People's Church is happy to announce the release of three new publications. Receiving God's guidance, offenses don't take them, and water baptism. These are available for free. You can use these resources for your personal study or in small groups, churches, and ministries. 
So download these at apcwo.org slash publications or request a free copy by writing to us at contact at apcwo.org. We trust you enjoyed the word today just to encourage our hearts to believe God against all odds. You know, that's what Jesus taught us, that no matter what the situation, no matter what the circumstance, even when things go from bad to worse, you still believe. Do not be afraid, only believe. I want to close in prayer, asking God's encouragement to fill your heart that you will go back to the Word of God, that you will go back to the promise of God concerning whichever area of your life that you want to see God work, and you will fear not, only believe. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just ask and pray for every person listening, God, that their hearts will be encouraged, that faith will come alive in their hearts, that all fear will be taken out, they will be re-established on the promise of God for their life. That they will be so focused on your word that nothing will shake them from it. And against all hope, in hope, they will believe. So that they will become according to what you have promised. Because your word will come to pass. And I pray their heart, encouragement fill their hearts. Even as they have heard this message. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way.
Better. 